Hey, check it. Hey, check it. Put the place up. So I got a question from one of my followers on Instagram the other day, and I thought it would actually make for quite an interesting video. The topic I think is quite relevant for the sport of tennis. So today's video is all about answering this question that I got from Steph Carpentier, who I believe is a tennis coach over in Belgium. I'll attach her Instagram account here. Uh, the question was, do you have any tips to get buy-in from tennis players? I feel like a lot of tennis players don't feel the need to go to the gym. All they want to do is play tennis. I have players at my club who are between 100 and 200 in Belgium, so a pretty decent level, but they only want to run long distances. So I thought that question was really relevant and today we're gonna to be discussing exactly that. I've come over to Cheshire Barbell this morning because Neil is back for one day before he heads and flies out to Dubai for next week's tournament. The plan is to do a gym session with him here before heading over to David Lloyd in Speak, where we're then gonna do some work on backhand return and serves. We've then got a little bit of a meeting. So as well as answering this question from, from my perspective, I also intend to speak with Neil himself and also one of my younger tennis players, Ant, who's currently 14, who I work with, uh, just to try and get their take on it, what their thoughts and opinions are on answering that question. So I'll put some footage on of the sessions from today and I'll get back to you guys shortly. But in today's video, we're gonna be looking at buy-in for tennis players with regard to their physical and athletic development. with Neil during the duration of the gym session and I, I'm kicking myself for not recording it actually I wish I'd have actually asked if I could sit down with him and, and get this on video but I'll, I'll, I'll answer on his behalf anyway and I'll give you guys an insight into his answer to Steph's question so Neil explained to me that when he was a youngster prior to going to LSU he played a lot of football and he would practice tennis uh, maybe three times a week throughout the week generally, and he started to take it more seriously once he started getting feedback from people about how talented he was for the sport. But generally speaking, physical development as far as we're concerned, Tennis Strong is concerned, and the videos that I'm putting to you guys at the moment is concerned, is that he never really took physical development from an athletic perspective, you know, strength training, interval training, etc., all that seriously in the early days. Obviously that would have changed when he was at LSU, but as his career has developed, it's generally become more and more serious. Now. Neil has certainly never neglected his body as such, but since working with myself, he's certainly started to take his physical development more seriously. So my question to him is, well, what's changed? Why are you, why is your buy-in to physical and athletic development now become much more serious? Why are you taking it more seriously? And what is it that you're doing about it? So his response was quite interesting and something that makes complete sense. He said that generally, as he's progressed through his career, He's always had to look up at those who are ranked above him, those who are winning Grand Slams and those who are doing better than him in the, in the ATP rankings, and try and find out you know, what is it that they're doing to be so successful. So as Neil has progressed through the ranking system, I mean, at the, at the time of this video, he's currently ranked 29 in the world. As he's progressed to the ranking that he currently has, he's having to look at those who are going out there and winning Grand Slams, for example. 
and he's, he's looking at statistics and he's looking at the way they play and he's starting to come to the conclusion that there's, there's not drastic areas to improve on on the tennis court itself. Statistically, things are going well. Technically, tactically, things are going well. So is it areas of, of physical, is it areas of psychological that separate him from those above him? So generally speaking, as he's become more and more experienced, physical development has become more and more important in order to get his ranking higher, get better results on the tennis court. He's trying to find out what higher ranked tennis players are doing and he's starting to recognize that the best in the world are in the gym all the time. The best in the world are looking after themselves physically. They are warming up correctly. They are training with the aim of trying to improve performance and reduce risk of injury. So this is starting to become something that he's a lot wiser to now, just under the circumstances that he himself is in. So it's a really interesting concept because in Neil's circumstance, it's only really been the last couple of years that he started to take his physical development much more seriously. Now at the moment, we're, we're doing a lot of work and we've got an incredible, exciting future over the next sort of 12 to 18 months to see what we can get out of Neil physically. But you know, those who are probably working in the gym that Steph is referring to, the, the youth, the younger players, they may not have people around them who are working to that extent. They've not necessarily got people to compare themselves to. So this obviously poses quite a, a, a difficult situation to deal with because younger players don't necessarily have the access to information of older players, those who are currently on the ATP tour, for example. Yes, in the world of social media, we do kind of get a glimpse as to little clips as to what goes on behind the scenes, but the reality is we don't know the bigger picture. We don't know the finer details. So what I do suggest in this circumstance is that either yourselves as coaches or even players individually, maybe reach out to people, reach out to people who are potentially an age group above, maybe a couple of years older, maybe even former aspiring tennis players, those who maybe no longer play in the game, those who perhaps have been futures challengers, for example, and don't play anymore, maybe they're now coaches themselves, ask them, if there was something that they could have done differently, what would it have been? Find out how, how seriously did they take their physical development? And to be honest, you'll probably find that in most circumstances, most people who no longer play and, and couldn't get themselves to the top of the game, probably all say the same thing, and that's that they wish they took their physical development much more seriously. Maybe consider tapping into academies, maybe get in touch with academies, go, go and visit academies and see what they get up to. It's really worthwhile looking up to players who are potentially in a better position than you are from a ranking or a rating perspective, and work out what it is that they're doing and how can you add physical development into your routine to help yourselves become better tennis players. I think the ultimate message from Neil's perspective is for you to try and get some understanding of what it is that others do, what those who are ranked and rated above you, what do they do, what, what goes on behind the scenes, and why is it that they're in a better position than what you are. Maybe you will actually find that they're doing a lot more work than what you are. On the opposite end of the scale, you might find that they're not doing as much as what you are, and that in itself can actually boost confidence. If you yourself know that you're up earlier, if you're training harder, if you're getting more work done in the gym than, than people who are ranked and rated above you, then it's only a matter of time before you potentially start overtaking them in the rating system. Anyway, I will touch base with Ant shortly. We're gonna head over to the tennis court now and do a little bit of work on backhand return and serves. So I will touch base with Ant. I'll get him to have a little bit of a chat with you guys to kind of see what it's like from the perspective of a 14 year old and why he is bought in to developing himself physically.
So I, we've been working together for 18 months now and consistently you've been in the gym doing weights probably around three or four times a week on the track doing speed, change of direction work, maybe twice a week. And every single morning before tennis, you do injury prevention work. Why is it that you're so committed to doing the development off court and not just wanting to play tennis all of the time? You need to get stronger off court so you can be better on court to play tennis. And if you do scuff off court, you've got less chance of getting injured. What makes you aware of that? How do you know that? It's obvious that the people on tour, they train. The people who don't train, they get injured a lot more. But even if you, if you, if you still do train, you get just still a chance of getting injured, but it's less of a chance, a lot less if you make those parts of your body stronger. And who's made you aware of that? How do you know that that's the case? Um, you, my dad, um, and it's obvious to know as well. Okay. So you, you, your tennis coach, your dad has bought into the idea. Yeah. Obviously I've helped educate you on those facts. What about the reward? What, what have you experienced on court as part of the process of you working hard off court? Um, I'm a lot faster now. Uh, because we did so much squatting, I'm a lot faster um, and I can move around the court a lot better, um, get to drop shots um, and I just feel stronger. Okay, good. So you feel that way. What about the actual results that we've got? So we've gotten results. We were, we're fortunate. We use the likes of Jim or to look at bar velocity and estimate your one rep max. We've got the force platform so we can look at your jump performance. We've got the timing gate so we can actually measure your speed on court when we're doing various speed drills. So you're telling me you actually feel a lot faster, but we've also got the data to prove that as well. Yeah. yeah. So Ant has quite clearly had a very different experience. He's been incredibly fortunate, in my opinion, to prioritise and take his physical and athletic development very seriously over the last 18 months. I started working with him when he was around about 12 and a half and he's recently turned 14 and in that time he's been in the gym with me on average around three times per week and every day we do injury prevention work before tennis he warms up really well and in addition to that we're on the track as you've seen from previous videos try and help him develop plyometric ability change of direction and speed so he's an incredibly fortunate position but the the, the question still lies why has he bought in and what is it that we've done to help him understand that physical and athletic development is incredibly essential to help him become a better tennis player. So from my perspective, I believe that education for the athlete is incredibly important. I've sat him down at numerous times and of course, I've never given him the finer details of the research studies that show correlations between strength training and movement literacy and reducing injury risk and improvements in performance, etc. However, I have obviously explained the significance of injury risk and how we can try and prevent that by training a certain way, etc, etc. But I think the main point for me, and I'll, I'll, I'll close the video on this, is that it's not just him that has had to be educated, it's everybody around him. I, on a regular basis, sit down with his tennis coach, his dad, his hitting partners, etc. And the aim is to try and help those guys understand the significance of physical and athletic development as well because if they understand the importance of it, then the message to Ant himself is always going to be consistent. So try yourself to educate not only the players, but also the coaches, the team, the parents around these individuals. And I think personally that that will have a much bigger impact than just trying to educate the athletes alone. I think it's essential that the culture and the environment that the guys, the individuals are working within, the message is constantly consistent from everybody. I think that's my main point. Anyway, I hope you found today's video really interesting. Please do hit the subscribe button below and the button to the right of that, which is the bell icon, so you get notified of our next release. I'll see you soon. Moist keen celebration when he scores. That could the wall, isn't it?